do want to welcome everybody to this second of our morning worship assemblies. Appreciate those who are here in person. Appreciate those who may be joining us later by way of technology. Look forward to next Sunday. Brother Adam will be doing everything here. He'll be teaching the auditorium class and preaching both lessons. And uh, he'll be worn out at the end. This their, their week at Maywood actually starts next Sunday. So prayers are for a great week at Maywood Christian Camp. Know that uh, because of the pandemic, they were not able to have camp last year. So prayers are for a better year this year over at Maywood and great things happening for that particular week and the weeks that are ongoing even now. We uh, will be in a gospel meeting in Tennessee and I'll be leaving Saturday sometime Saturday and be back sometime late Wednesday up in a gospel meeting there. Looking forward to preaching where I preached while I was going to school. And so they uh, have me back ever so often and I'm looking forward to seeing all those folks again. Although it's been about 35 years, I guess, since I preached there regularly, and most of the people who were there aren't there now simply due to the passing uh, of, of life, and so a lot of new folks have taken their place, and that's, that's a good thing. But anyway, that's where we'll be next week. Our text this morning is taken from the book of Psalms. We know the book of Psalms is a unique book of the Bible in many ways. And so to sort of get us started this morning, just a bit of trivia, if you're into trivia, uh, about the book of Psalms. Uh, the first, we obviously know that the book of Psalms is the longest book in the Bible, 150 chapters. In fact, no other book comes close to second. Isaiah is the second longest in the Bible. It has 66 chapters. So Psalms is way over more than twice, chapter-wise, the length of the next longest book, Isaiah. Another tidbit, the book of Psalms contains the longest chapter in the Bible. In fact, our text comes from that, verse 133, 176 verses in Psalm 119. So in your spare time, try memorizing that. That'd be a challenge, would it not? Psalms also has, and that, I'll take that challenge, the shortest chapter in the Bible, two verses. I, I can handle that one, Psalm 117. The book of Psalms has the middle chapter of the Bible. Psalm 117 is the middle chapter, and Psalm 118.8 is the middle verse of the Bible. And we just finished reading not long ago this portion of Scripture, so we, at the middle of the year, are about at the halfway part in reading our Bible. So those are some trivia facts about the book of Psalms, none of which obviously are salvation matters. So again, we're looking today at a verse in Psalm 119, again, 176 verses. I have, and I've told this before, when I study Psalms, I often will look at the treasury of David written by Charles Spurgeon. And depending upon the particular publishing company that is bound in different ways, I have the seven volume set. And in volume number six, Spurgeon devotes the vast majority of that one volume to this one chapter. 398 pages, single space, fine print, devoted to one chapter of the Bible. And that tells me I could preach hundreds of sermons for years on this one text of Scripture. Psalm 119 is a massive song. It extols the greatness of God's Word, Scripture, the Bible, whatever you want to call it, the truth. It extols the greatness of God's Word, so much so that note this, in the 176 verses that make up Psalm 119, 174 of them refer to God's Word. And so that's why we can safely say, Psalm 119, the theme is the greatness of the Bible, the Word of God. Psalm 119, 133, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Order. We think of order, we think of maybe nature. There is not chaos, there is order in nature. You take the tiny snowflake, and those in the know tell us 
that if you take a lens and look really closely at a snowflake, you will see order. You will see a six-fold radial symmetry with identical patterns on each of its arms. And yet people say there is no God. How can you say there's no God when you look at the beauty of a snowflake? We're told that no two snowflakes are exactly alike. I've often wondered about that though. How could you prove that? You would have to examine every single snowflake to know that no two of them are exactly alike. And I guess those who've come up with that just examined enough to know that most are different, so therefore all are different. But again, the point is there's order even in the tiny snowflake. There is order in any business that is successful. If you're gonna run a business, it needs to have order. And there are businesses that actually will help you give order to your life. If you have a discluttered home, there are businesses that will come if you'll give them a call and they'll restore order to your home. Food for thought, right? Well, it should not surprise us if there is order in nature, obviously, all of life, it should not be surprising to find a call in the Bible for order in spiritual life. And that's what Psalm 119, 133 is all about. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. The prophet Jeremiah says, I know that it is not in man to direct his steps. The way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Jeremiah 10, 23. We can't make it on our own. I cannot get from earth to heaven without being ordered, without following orders, without following the will of God. And thus, the exhortation or the request of the psalmist, order my steps in thy word. I want to go to heaven. Show me the way. Guide me. I need your help. Every step I take, every act I do, May it be governed by the Word of God. That was his plea and prayer. And that should our, be our plea and prayer and song even today. We want to note two things as we look at Psalm 119, 133. Order my steps. Number one, let's consider some implications of what the psalmist is saying here. One implication is complete submission. Order my steps. I am bowing to you. Tell me what to do. It is thy will, not mine. Order my steps. You say jump, I'm going to jump. You say go, I'm going to go. I'm going to do whatever you want me to do. I cannot make it on my own. Now, what an attitude. Contrast that with some today who say things like, well, I don't take orders from anybody. Nobody is going to tell me what to do. And I've heard people say things like that, and I've often thought they need to do a hitch in the military. I don't take orders from anybody. Well, <laughs> they need to take orders, or they need to take a hitch in the military then. Uh, that's, that's not the attitude of the psalmist. I am under you. Order, order my steps. And I think about those who say I don't take orders. I think about the young man who applied for a job with a company and he filled out the application and they called him in for an interview one day and the prospective boss or employer was sitting down, told the young man to sit down and he did and the, uh, the prospective employer asked the young man, uh, son, what can you do? And the young man replied, I can do what I'm told to do. And he got the job. There's a lot in simply saying, I, I can do what I'm told to do. Order my steps. Humility is a key in this. Humility, a complete putting down of self, a willingness to follow without question. Again, we think about other Bible characters who did, as the psalmist said, order my steps. I think about Saul of Tarsus and his humility. He was a man in the upper echelon of Phariseeism and Judaism on the road to Damascus with the express purpose of persecuting Christians. He encountered the risen Lord and the Lord basically said, Saul, you're fighting against the very cause you think you're promoting. You're kicking against the pricks. 
and saw in humility, in essence said, order my steps. Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? I didn't realize I was wrong. Thanks for pointing it out. What can I do to make things right? Order my steps. We think about those on the day of Pentecost. Peter took his finger, pointed it in their chest, and said, You have taken the Lord and Savior and crucified Him. Their response was, Order our steps. Men and brethren, what shall we do? We're wrong. We know we're wrong. Thanks for pointing that out. We want to be saved. Tell us what to do. Order our steps. Whatever it takes, we'll submit to it and we'll do it. But note also, not only is a key humility, but the thrust is thoroughness. Order my steps, implying all of my steps. The psalmist doesn't say, well, order some of my steps, or many of my steps, or most of my steps. The implication is, order every one of my steps, because he knew it only takes one false step to fall. One false step to leave God. Order my steps. Thoroughness. Notice next, not only does this imply complete submission, order my steps, but second, it implies recognition of personal responsibility. Order, and now the emphasis is on the pronoun my. Order my steps. I'm not worried about you ordering somebody else. What do I need to do? How do I need to live? Order my steps. We have examples in the Bible of individuals who thought that somebody else's steps needed to be ordered. Remember Martha? Mary, Martha, Lazarus, close friends of Jesus? At times he would stop by their home and visit with them. And on one occasion he did just that. Martha was in the kitchen slaving away, preparing a meal. She thought that Sister Mary ought to have been in there with her, helping her, so much so that she went to Jesus and said, Master, make Mary come help me serve. In essence, she was saying, Master, order Mary's steps. I think about Luke 12, the man who told Jesus, Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Well, again, Jesus, I want you to order his steps. And folks, there's no doubt that the steps of others need to be ordered, but I need to begin with me. And that's what the psalmist does. What Martha and the man of Luke 12 ought to have done, order my steps. David knows, the psalmist knows that others need the same thing, but he also knows that others cannot do it for him. I have to take personal responsibility. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Order our steps. We're going to be judged individually, and so it behooves us now to have our lives individually governed by Scripture. So this implies complete submission, recognition of personal responsibility. This also implies satisfaction with God's Word. Order my steps in thy word. Not experience, not personal feelings or subjectivism, how often do we hear people say, well, you know what? I'm right because I feel it right here. I'm right because I feel right. Well, we are right when we walk in harmony with God's Word. Thy Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Thy Word, not my feelings or the feelings of others or opinions of others. Thy Word, Thy Word. John says, if we abide in the doctrine of Christ, not our feelings or the thoughts of others, if we abide in the doctrine of Christ, we have both the Father and the Son. 2 John verse 9, order my steps in thy word. It is said in the late 1800s, one of the kings of Poland carried around with him a, a portrait of his father. It is said that this king, before he had any great work to perform or some great task to do, he would pull out that portrait of his father and look at that and pray that he would never do anything unworthy of his father's name. He did not want to bring shame 
on his father. We have in the Bible a portrait of our father, a portrait of God, the very scriptures themselves. We would do well before we act or speak to pull out that portrait and look at God and vow I don't want to say or do anything that would bring shame to him, his name, or his cause. I don't want to make my father ashamed. We're satisfied with, with the word of God. This phrase, order my steps, implies liberation from sin. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. The flip side of that is, if I'm not following the word of God, then dominion, iniquity is going to have dominion over me. In fact, the Bible says that sin enslaves. Jesus said, whoever commits sin is the servant of sin. John 8, 34. Paul said, do you not know that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. I'm either a slave to sin, or I'm a slave to righteousness. If I order my steps in God's word, iniquity cannot control my life. It cannot have dominion over my life. But I can just as surely be shackled to sin as a prisoner is shackled or chained to a wall. Freedom from sin, from any sin, is found in following the word of God. Earlier in this very Psalm 119, the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. You connect Psalm 11911 with Psalm 11933. You've got an unbeatable combination in dealing with the sin problem. I hide thy word in my heart. I order my life by thy word. Sin will not have dominion over me. And so, order my steps in thy word. Secondly, to whom does this apply? Let's look at, we've looked at the implications. What about now the application in the second place? To whom does this apply? Order my steps in thy word. And we can answer that with one word, everybody. This applies to everyone, and you're right, but let's break the everyone down into the three categories that all who are accountable find themselves. To whom does this apply? Obviously, number one, the unconverted, the person who is not yet a Christian, the one who has never obeyed the gospel. He ought to say, order my steps in thy word. When it comes to obeying the gospel, order my steps. Well, one step is to hear the word. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Having heard the gospel, order my steps. Well, the next step is faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God, Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Jesus said, if you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sins, John 8, 24. Next Having heard the word, having believed in Christ, order my steps. What's the next step? Well, the Bible speaks of remorse, godly remorse that leads to a changed life that is called repentance. Again, Jesus said, unless you repent, you will die in your sins, Luke 13, 3. You will also perish, Luke 13, verse 5. Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, Acts 2, 38. Having heard the word, having believed, having repented, order my steps. What's the next step? The Bible speaks of the need of confession. Confess Christ to be the Son of God. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter made the grand confession, one that we must make as well. Having heard, having believed, repented, confessed, order my steps. Are that the only step? Are those the only steps? Some would say yes. Some would say, I'm going to follow my feelings now. That's the end of the road. That's all the steps. The Bible says no. The Bible says there's the step of baptism. Order my steps. The orders now are, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. 
Mark 16, 16. Why tarriest thou, Saul, arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord? Order my steps when it comes to being saved. Now that my steps have been ordered by the Lord, I've obeyed the gospel, I follow those. The Bible says I am now in Christ, baptized into Christ, Galatians 3, 27. Baptized into the body, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. In the church, Ephesians 1, verse 23. All unconverted need to say as the psalmist, order my steps. But second, those of us who are Christians, likewise still need to say, God, order my steps. Order my steps when it comes to such things as the Lord's Day. We know this, of course, as the first day of the week. Lord, order my steps when it comes to the first day of the week. The steps of the disciples of the first century, they did assemble. Acts 20, verse 7. Hebrews 10, 25 says, God's orders are, don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. If my steps are ordered by the Lord, I'm going to be with the saints when the saints assemble. When it comes to giving, God, order my steps. Order my steps when it comes to giving. Realizing how much you have sacrificed for me. It's not going to hurt for me to sacrifice in turn for the work of the church. 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. When it comes to living the truth, Lord, order my steps, order my steps. Before I speak, in choosing my friends, I don't want to choose friends who pull me away from the Lord. Order my steps. In deciding on a career, I don't want to choose a profession that will weaken me spiritually. Order my steps. And such things as picking out the clothes I wear. Lord, order my steps. In an age of immodesty, in an age of revealing and appealing clothing, the tighter the better. God, order my steps. And help me wake up and see what I need to realize or what I need to do. That I'm not to be conformed to the world, but I'm to be transformed. When it comes to worship, I need to say, order my steps. I want to be concerned about the apostles' doctrine, Acts chapter 2. I want to observe the Lord's Supper every first day of the week, Acts 20, verse 7. When it comes to the music of the church, I want to sing. The Lord's orders are sing, Ephesians 5, 19, Colossians 3, 16. When it comes to worship, order my steps. When it comes to working for the Lord, order my steps. When the sick need to be visited, God, order my steps. When the needy need help, order my steps. When people need to be taught, Lord, order my steps. When it comes to working for the Lord, we need to say, Lord, order our steps. And then finally, the unfaithful. That is one who's obeyed the gospel but has forsaken the gospel, has turned his back on the Lord and the church. He surely needs to say, if he wants heaven as his home, Lord, order my steps. Those steps are you need to be restored to the Lord. Realize your lost condition. Repent. Have people pray for you as, as Simon the sorcerer did, Acts the 8th chapter. James says if we confess our faults one to another, then we certainly can be healed. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. James 5 verse 16. Everybody needs to say, order my steps. The everybody includes those who aren't Christians those who are Christians, and those who become unfaithful children of God. And so, Psalm 119, 133, is a verse that we certainly don't want to overlook in our reading, in our studying, and then in our applying to our lives. A well-ordered life is the one that submits our will to the will of God. Now, what difference does it make? What difference does it make whether or not I submit my steps in my life to the Lord's steps? My will to the Lord's will. Well, we know that it is simply the difference between heaven and hell. I don't know of any plainer way to put it than that. It is the difference between heaven and hell, whether we just go our own way in life or whether our lives are ordered by the Lord. Job says that God even numbers our steps. Job 14, verse 16. 
Since God numbers our steps, he certainly has the right to order them. And it's up for me in my life and you to follow the will of God if heaven is to be our home. May we join in with the psalmist in saying, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Respond this morning if you need to as we stand and as we sing.